30 seconds, studio. I did not lie. <coughs> VTR Yorkshire Television, Gazette, part one, take one. Last with the news again. You might have told us. What? And I'm using the parts of the Odeon this week? Oh, are you? No. I am? You know my oldest stuck on horror films? No, I mean about this. What? Leading civil servant resigns. James Hadley to return to Yorkshire. Let's see. He might at least have let us print it first. He might have. But you must have explained it to him. They pick it up from us, or at least get it on the same day. And then one of us could have picked up a modest half guinea. Well, that would have helped, too. Yes, I agree. I think it's a shabby trick. Shabbier than you know. No, I don't... Wait a minute. You mean you didn't know? I mean just that. Oh, then you must no, belt be up a minute, love. I want to think. I think that. I think you great. should belt up. <laughs> Look, I'll discuss a good deal with you. From your love life to the imprecision of this story of yours. House in danger in Fairfield Lane, but I will not discuss my relationships with our proprietor, so run along. Here, take this with you. I mark the more obvious places where the facts are missing. You want me if you to... didn't get the facts the first time... I know. Go back. That's my girl. I'm sort of going back to our Mr. Hadley. Who? No, I don't talk to newspapers. Would you put him through to public relations? No, I don't want to speak to public relations. Look, you explain to Mr. Hadley, I'm speaking from Westdale, where he was born. Yes, I know him. I'm the editor of the Westdale Gazette. Yes, it is personal. Well, certainly I'll hang on. It's his brass I'm spending. He said that, did he? Well, let's not allow him to waste any more. Would you put him on? Good morning, Walters. I assume you've something urgent to say. Morning. I have something urgent to ask. Well? Well, today's post has a story that you're resigning and returning to live here. Yes. Is it true? Well, it's not untrue, but if you're quoting them accurately, then their tenses are a little muddled. Meaning? Meaning I'm not resigning, I have resigned. With effect from? With effect from this week, Friday, to be precise, though I don't see what business it is of yours. Don't you? No. I don't expect my arrival on the scene to have much effect on you, not immediately, anyway. <laughs> well, that's not quite the point. I'm speaking as a reporter. Your resignation is news. Oh, I shouldn't have thought so. Well, the post has already shown that it is. Well, if it has, it has. Well, it's even more news to this paper. Now we'll have to follow along behind. And you resent that? Well, yes, sir, I do. I mean, if one's own proprietor won't give one a story. Yes, I see that. It should have occurred to me. I may say that I didn't communicate with the Post personally. They must have got this from our press office, I suppose. Checked it with your press office, I should think, but they must have got the story from somewhere. No doubt, but does any of this justify a protracted telephone call over such vast distances? Look, I'm not speaking from Siberia. No, but you are speaking in my time, in a double sense. And at a rate per minute, which I hope my paper can afford, and even then doesn't indulge in often. 
Well, I wanted to check this. Well, you have. Then I shall want a quote. A quote? Yes, you know, something like, uh, I have decided that the future of England does not depend upon London. Well, I'd never say anything as fatuous or as trite. But something. Very well. I am returning to Yorkshire to devote my attention to the complex of interests for which I now find myself responsible. Got that. That's all. Go on. There's no more. But surely you can I've say something... I've said all I intend to. I see. Well, at least let me check your biography. Yes, well, if you can't do that locally, then you're even less enterprising than I'd expected. Is that all, Mr. Hadley? I think so. Oh, except that I'm inclined to treat this as, at best, an insignificant item of news. Thank you. Goodbye. Provincial. Condescending bastard. Well, we'll see what we can do locally. Well, it just shows Hadley knows nothing about newspapers. Oh, it just doesn't care about this one. Uh, even though it is. Morning, Bill. Hi. That house not fallen down yet? Oh, I don't know. I was just telling Bill about Hadley. Yes, yes. We'll just see what kind of fire we've got on our beloved proprietor, eh? Well, it won't say we'll much. We'll just get it, eh? You've been on to him, of course. Yes. No joy? Not much. Half apologised. Quarter apologised. Said he hadn't told the post himself. And didn't think it was important anyway. That's right. I'm going to teach him, are you? Haven't made up my mind yet. Not something to decide in a hurry, and you don't want to know what I think. That's right. You've got a light. I said there wasn't much. His birth, of course, scholarship, degree, appointment. His presence at old Mr. Hadley's funeral, and that's all. Only one picture taking his degree. His dishy in a waterboard. Oh, 18 years ago. Have you seen him? No, the uh, editor did the funeral, and I wasn't one of those invited to go shooting with him. Do you think I was? Who's our personality in the news this week? Alfred M. Walker, leader of the Westdale Mills Prize Band for the last ten years. Yeah, he'll hold, won't he? Oh, sure. The championship isn't until next week, and that band won't win anyway. Whose band put up a brave display at the national championships. That's right. Huh? Right. We'll do James Archibald Hadley, M.A. Oxon, formerly Assistant Secretary at the Department of Economic Planning. Returning home to add luster to his native town. And county. Return of the prodigal. No, it's not quite that. Didn't much care for my telephone call to London, so there'd be no trip in this for anybody. Oh, not even me. <laughs> if I thought you'd soften him up, I'd say, bless you, my child, even with jealousy in my heart. Hey, I'd never worth those things. Could we do a good job on this? You know, I mean, something more than just 39-year-old... Dirt in depth by the Westdale Gazette news team. Well, we could probe a bit. Well, it might be useful anyway, even if we couldn't publish. Well, we've got two days. All right. But you two keep your heads about this. Just aim at the facts, like when he's due home, just what his various interests do comprise. Facts? Aim at facts. Impressions you get by aiming at facts. Yes, sir. I'll try a few calls to London, have words with the man of law. And me? You check the estate, the bailiff, the chauffeur, you know, man stuff. And me? The relations for you. Isn't Colonel Chamberlain still in your thrall? That old goat. One of our most respected citizens. Oh, he's rather a nice old boy, actually. So don't blame him if he can't keep his eyes off you. Look at the trouble we have. Hey, Courtney's was pretty slim this morning, but I might still catch him. Missed you in court this morning. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. Do you know I can only find time for the juicy ones? Young, pretty girl like you, sordid cases. I like earning my living this way. Could I, uh, could we drop you somewhere? Oh, well, I was coming to see you, in fact. Well, then why don't you drive home with me? Oh, it's stranded four miles out of town. Max will drive you back after a glass of sherry.
I might as well use Maxwell up to the hilt as long as I got him. I'm sure Mr Hadley will understand about court days, sir. Well, let's hope so. As old Tim Hadley was on the bench too, although it must have induced inconvenient for him, he always used to drive round and pick me up on his way to court. I'm encouraging Maxwell to continue the tradition. Old Mr Hadley was a kind man, I'm told. Absolute charmer he was, straight as a die. We only heard today that young Mr Hadley is coming back. Uh, we read about him today. Where? Uh, the post, Colonel. Page six, top left-hand column. Dead right. Oh? We, the Gazette, that is, we wondered how the Post knew. Well, James probably told them. <coughs> he didn't. He says he didn't. I see. Then I suppose he must have been me. I think that's a bit mean. Well, it wasn't to a reporter I said it, my dear. It was to that editor chap, Boxley. I met him at the Bishop's reception. To which we weren't invited. It was a terrible do. Awful sherry his lordship serves. Never been anywhere near Spain, I can assure you. stop here just to look. Why, it's a grand sight. Lots of it used to be ours, the Cornishes and the Hadleys. <laughs> my family never owned anything. You probably will, my dear. Pretty girl and intelligent. <clears throat> stop being disagreeable, Maxwell. I approve of prettiness. I think the world should be full of handsome men and pretty painted women. I approve of the first part. Uh, some of us wear pretty well. How can I help you, my dear? What will you allow me to do for you? Aren't we nearly there? Uh, yes, a few minutes more. <clears throat> uh, business after Sherry. An editor in my office. It happens so rarely, you must allow me to mark the occasion. Thank you. You still say... Of course I still say Sherry wine. I enjoy being old-fashioned. I'm glad you noticed. Uh, do sit down. Thank you. So, what do you want? Well, I've brought you the galleys. I've read the galley proofs of the West Ale Gazette for 24 years. I have been paid to. I have not enjoyed it. And they've always been delivered to me, either by very old men or very young boys. So there's a, a difficult one here, eh? Then what do you want? Nothing. Advice? Professional? Yes. Well, you're happily married. A little temptation around the office? <laughs> but surely not. I don't mean professional in that sense. Nor in this. So, it must be young James. Who? Oh, but he's at least 38. And how old do you consider yourself? And before you answer, I know you're 36. As Susan said, you were very good in court. Despite my age, I perform quite well in other fields too. So, uh, do I, metaphorically of course, since I'm not that young, do I throw you out or do you tell me what you want? Well, I said I wanted advice, and I do. About? About James Hadley. Clever of you not to say what you wanted in front of Maxwell, the old family retainer. Relatives are different? Oh, of course. Especially senior relatives, they're not inhibited. <laughs> I'd noticed. Young lady, that's not fair. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to be rude. Oh, well, perhaps it wasn't fair of me to put it that way either. A truce? Gladly. So you want to know about James? For publication? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a family Bible with date of birth and all such details. Thanks. Well, have you got a photograph album? Yes, there's an album with photographs. Accessible? To you, anyway. coming back? Well, to use the place instead of selling it. He has to do one or the other. Is that all? Ah, oh, perhaps it's rather a glib reply. Flippant, as I tend to be. Off the bench. It's not the truth, though the truth's not scandalous. Go on, sir. Ah, oh, that finishes me, doesn't it? I don't see what you mean. 
No, because you're too young and I'm too lecherous. In my day, we had serving maids. And they always fought it by saying, sir. You're too sharp for me. I like you, sir. I think you're a real education. Well, I still know something about finesse, so, um, hoik down that pelmet of a skirt and let me concentrate. And I'll try and help. About James Hadley? He's a calculating bastard. Uh, not literally, of course. He's very shrewd. Well, anybody who got that far in the civil service would have to be. Yes, though it wasn't so far. No? No, I didn't say not far enough for James. If you've not made undersecretary by 40, you're stuck. Pleasantly stuck, but stuck. And he was ambitious? Oh, I'd say he is ambitious. Or what? I don't know. I suspect he doesn't either. I've always felt he wanted to make his mark. Not flashily, not even very publicly, but his mark. Well, he hasn't succeeded in London. But then you know how difficult that is. Well, I was doing... Doing seemingly quite well on a rather common Fleet Street newspaper. And James was doing seemingly quite well on a rather upstart ministry in Whitehall. You two want to get along together. We'll have to, won't we? Uh, perhaps. He could remain aloof from the paper. You don't think he will? No. Thank you. Power? Perhaps, more relevantly, and I say this uh, strictly, uh, what do you say, strictly off the record, the newspaper is the only thing he owns completely. Yes, his interest in Cramshaw's engineering is large, but not a controlling one. And his ownership of the manor house and estate is hedged and ditched about by covenants and trust deeds. He owns the Westdale Gazette. He can do with it what he likes. Well, it'll seem small stuff after Whitehall. Must have seemed small stuff to you after Fleet Street. Touché. Then why not begin your inquiry with yourself? Test your own motives. You may find some of them fit James. Well, I was fed up with London, sick to the stomach of the noise of driving two hours to work or of getting off a packed train as greasy as a sardine. It was claustrophobia almost. I felt I couldn't relax, couldn't breathe. James may feel exactly like that. And? Well, he may. I don't know, of course, but he may be finding his work distasteful. He may want to do rather than to regulate. For the most part, civil servants are less productive even than journalists. Or lawyers. Oh, go away, young man. One last question. Are you glad he's coming back? In one sense, no. He's intelligent, thorough, shrewd. He'll pay close attention to his business interests, which means I shall have to pay them close attention too. He's a very important client. The boss on your back. Yes, though the word has more direct implications for you than for me. But in another sense, you are glad. Yes. In the same way, I became glad that you had forsaken London. Thank you. The Gazette is a far less shoddy newspaper than it was three years ago. It's more profitable, too. Uh, which is important, but not paramount. Quality matters. It's a better newspaper. And my hope is that James will make Cramshaw's engineering a better company, his estate a better estate, and he may even make me a better lawyer. You make him sound like a messiah. Then you would be his John the Baptist, would you not? He was the one who had his head offered on a platter. That's right. Do you see yourself as a martyr? No. My head's not for rolling. But the axe is in Hadley's hands. I reckon that'll have to be sacrificed. What, the wood, you mean? Well, the timber can come out of there. You know, old Mr. Hadley never liked to spoil the ground. There's a piece I'll have to go. How much do you think? Up 
to three thousand pounds with if he has the mind to. It's great to have money. Yeah, it's not so great to have to pay it out to keep it. What, death duties, you mean? That's right. You're old, Mr. Hadley, wasn't so old. You had to live for years, quite hale he was. I thought they made provision for death duties now. Yeah, but in this case, not early enough. The old boy left it too late, eh? Bad luck. Yeah, bad luck for Mr. James. And for me, too. Might also be bad luck for you. So why? Did you ever see old Mr. Hadley in your office? Only once. He came to present the clock to Joe Blossom, the printer, when he retired. Yeah, well, there you are, then. It was the same with me. I saw him, of course. Passed the time of day with him nearly every day. But only politeness, you understand. Only civilities. And only once a complaint. Hardly a complaint even then, more a suggestion. And never a cross word, not in five years. Proper country idle. That's right. Is it going to be so different now? Different already. Already? Look, the old man's been dead six weeks. It's five weeks since the funeral. I've seen Mr. James five separate times since then. Five times he's had me cart him round the estate. He's taking a good look. It's a money look. Accounting, actuarial. Like one of those bloody inspectors from the tomato board, or the potato board, or the egg board. Or the milk marketing board, or the fat stock commission, or even the commissioners for inland revenue. That's it. That's what he's like. That's what he was. A bit glorified, a bit higher up, but that's what he was for. That's what I'm saying. Questions. Questions, details, interference. And I'll not be the only one. It'll be your turn next. Well, I must be getting back. Yes, I suppose so. Uh, could I take this picture? That one? Well, it's the most recent. Seven years old. Not very good, either. I don't think we've got one at all. Anonymity, the mark of the good civil servant. But he isn't anymore, is he? So he'll have to get used to it. Or you'll have to get used to him. Colonel, I don't care, you know. Oh, I enjoy my work on the Gazette. There's not much money, but it's fun. I get to places. I get to people I wouldn't get to in a shop or in any office. I like it and I'm learning all the time, but that's all. That's surely a good deal. Oh, I've just said so, but I, we, people of my age, we're not frightened, you know. We're not scared of getting the sack. And that's all Mr. Hadley could do to me. I'd pat you. You're you... nice. There. And please notice how deeply I'll bow to the bench in court next week. I don't get the proper view from there. <laughs> Gotta face you when I bow. Now, where's my car? I was promised a car. And a chauffeur. My lady, your carriage waits. Yours for now, anyway, even though it's his. I suppose it's all right to sit down. What? You haven't got a fag on you, have you? No. You know, actuarially, we could dispense with one chair in this office and one desk. It would give us more room as well. Come on, I'll buy it. You will? Right, then. One chair, one desk. Good condition, a little surface wear only. Come the gent is offering. What's point? Well, I think, Mr. Editor, that we are going to be subjected to a bit of analysis. Managerial stuff. Time and motion study. Like how long does it take Bill Spence to sink a pint? That's an offer, is it? No, we haven't got time, Bill, but that's your impression, is it? Yeah. Yes, it's mine too. Two out of three. Susan's taking her time. Nattering, I expect. Or listening. She's a good listener. How long have you been with the Hadleys, Mr. Maxwell? That's my concern, miss. Well, couldn't it be mine, too? It shouldn't be. But if I say it is? I must say what they likes, less. Thanks very much. You see, Mr. Maxwell, what I'm interested have in. Have you ever is... been on a coach trip, Miss? No, I don't think I have. Well, I have. In this country and on the continent of Europe. I fancy coach trips, Miss. With the driving I do, it's champion not to have to drive. Mm, I can see that. There's one thing all coach trips have in common, Miss. Here, even in Scotland and on the continent of Europe. 
what's that? There's, there's a notice, miss. Always there's a notice. Near the driver. The language is different, of course. But? But the sentiment's the same, the whole place over. Just a minute, miss. I like it best, uh, for the sound, that is, in Spanish. So I get one of these notices. Oh, I don't steal it, mine. No. I ask the driver, tell him I'm a driver myself, and he sympathises and unscrews it for me then and there. Now, you'll be educated enough to understand it. It is forbidden to talk to the driver when the vehicle is in motion. You could always have said, shut the gob. I don't use that kind of talk, miss. <laughs> well, it's what you want to say. I'm always respectful, lass. Then uh, stop the car, driver. What? It's always a mistake to get familiar with servants. Ah, oh, don't you dare to... And you can shut your gob. I'm getting out. I'll make to get in the back. You can leave me here if you like. I can always hitch a lift. Otherwise, you can do as the Colonel ordered and deliver me back to the office. Thank you, driver. The office, please. Well, we can't use much of this. No? No, you know we can't. The fact that the old man Hadley died three years too soon. Useful to know, though. Yes. Shows he was reluctant to trust his precious son, didn't it? Mm, perhaps he had cause. We can't deal in perhapses. Hey, are you sure about this? What? He's been down here every week since the funeral. Oh, yeah. Portal was vehement about it. Then why didn't we know? Well, we can't know everything. Well, I thought you had good contact. Somebody must have seen him. Did Mr. Solicitor Appleton tell you? No. Oh, and I bet he knew. Yeah, fair enough. I told him I couldn't breathe in London, couldn't relax. You think I'm relaxing too much here? Well, the pace has slackened. Fair enough. Pictures. I haven't looked. Right now. No, we'll have to try the agencies. Have you got anything? No, uh, just that mortarboard picture. Oh, that's daft. Didn't you ask on the estate? No. No, and I didn't ask Appleton either. Then, then go, go back. back. No, no, no. Try the agencies first. Thought you'd deserted. Sherry with the Colonel. And I've had no lunch. That's right. That's the name, love, yes. Are you sure? No, I don't think running for Oakley School will do, love. This isn't an obituary, you know. Have another look, will you? Well, come on, he must have been in some unball stuff or something. Are you sure? Well, please, keep looking, will you? Cheers. Kid stuff's all they've got. Not a social gent, at least not locally. I can beat them. Ah, that's a girl. How old? Seven years ago, the Colonel said. Yeah, well, it's not unlike. We'll have to do. Right, now, what have you got to add to this... Masterpiece we're concocting. Not much. Except that the Colonel thinks he's a bastard. Metaphorically speaking, of course, my dear. Great. Well, you just bash something out you think we can use. Let me have it and I'll wrap it up nicely. With ribbon. Something else that's missing, isn't it? Nothing about women. No girls. Well, the Colonel said he was a cold fish. Mm, not one of those, is he? We didn't say that. Didn't hint it either. Well, that's something you can judge for us, love, all in good time. Won't have to wait long, anyway. He's due back tomorrow night. Hey, then we could wait, couldn't we? We could do a page one para this week and give him the personality treatment next week. And get a decent picture, too. You kids are so innocent. If we give him a chance, he'll kill this. 
and we're not going to give him a chance. Martyr? You're the second person who said that to me today. I'm only a reporter. I have six minutes more. Uh, uh, well, uh, hurry it along then, will you please? Uh, it's Mr. Maxwell speaking. Uh, uh, Mr. Adley will want to speak to me. Who? Oh, yes, put him on. He's not exactly given to frivolity. Yes, Maxwell, what's wrong? Well, it, it's not that anything's wrong, sir, but I thought you were... Oh, oh, another two shillings. One. Uh, two. Maxwell? Uh, oh, yes. What's up? Well, well it's, it's about this newspaper of yours, sir. Uh, there's been a reporter fella down on the estate talking to Portal. Uh, and a leggy strip of a girl reporter talking to the colonel and trying to talk to me. What about? About you, sir. Oh, that's flattering. What does it? Oh, never mind. I don't see that it matters, sir. Well, it's, it's, it's peeping, sir. People prying into your life. Well, that's an open book. Anyway, even a leggy girl didn't get much out of you, I'll bet. <laughs> of course she didn't, sir. No, of course. Is that all? Oh, yes, sir, but I... I thought you'd want to know. Yes. Uh, and the Colonel's no soul of discretion, uh, sir. Least of all with a pretty girl. Yes, all right, Maxwell. I'll be arriving tomorrow evening as arranged. All right, sir. Uh, the newspaper will be out by then. <sighs> Miss Henderson, would you get me a personal call to Colonel Chamberlain at Westdale 8695? This crummy ad for a carpet sale, it ruins page seven. No doubt. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I thought it was uh, Dawson, our respected printer. Instead of which? Why, well, it's Colonel Chamberlain, our respected chairman of magistrates. And I mean that, sir. I'm Bill Spence. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? Well, I was wondering... Uh, Miss Jackson is uh, down on the stone, sir, but she won't be long. One day you must tell me what that means, down on the stone. Sounds interesting. Well, it's our expression... In the meantime, I need to speak to your editor. Oh, well, it's just through there, sir. If you just hang on a minute. Well, sir, we've got time to take this carpet out off seven onto nine. We need another inch and a half on nine. With Colonel Chamberlain, uh, we've met twice, I think. I remember you very clearly. Yeah, well, you've caught us at one of our hectic moments. You'll excuse, Spence. Oh, of course, of course. Look, this hardware ad is less deep by seven-eighths of an inch. If you swap it for two, you've got no problems. Right. Oh, excuse me. Bob. Ah, sir, what can I do for you? Well, it's a trifle awkward. Well, there wasn't much court stuff this week, Colonel. I don't remember any vigorous moral pronouncements from the bench. Is there anything you want me to check? No. Then... As I said, it is a little awkward. Private and personal, no doubt. to find out what he wanted. The walls were thin enough. Hey, Susan. Here a minute. Did, uh, did he put his hand up his skirt this morning? Good God, no. Are you sure? Look, I Yes, know when... I know, but it's what you're scared about, isn't it? I'm not scared of anything. But we all know you're a big girl now, but you're still dumped on the edges. If the chairman of the bench is scared about what he did, or tried to do he this morning. He didn't do anything. Oh, that's all right. Then. But if he did, or tried to do, he didn't. But if he had? Well, if he had, and if he felt nervous as a consequence, it was obvious. What's obvious? Well, he'll get his complaint in first. Complaint? I just thought that I, I should tell you, old boy, that uh, that reporter thing of yours is a little forward, wouldn't you say? Inclined to be, uh, how shall I put it? Inclined to be provocative. You were flaunting yourself a rotten, don't you know? Do you really think? Do you? No. Well, that's all right, then. Oh, it's too sweet. If you say so. I haven't seen him in the office before. No, nor have I. So it could be about... You're not only wet about the edges, dim in outline, you're also conceited. Oh, top. Look, if he's not here about you, which is still possible, and knowing you even likely, if he's not here about you, then he's here about Hadley. 
Then let's go up. Let me get the position quite clear. I've made it as clear as I can. Then let me paraphrase. You've come here today to advise me not to treat Mr. Hadley's return to Westdale as the major news item I think it is. I don't think he'd like a fuss to be made. <laughs> people often don't, but it doesn't stop me. James isn't just people. Singular. And your proprietor. Ah, that's the crunch, I suppose. I would have thought so. Well, you would have been wrong. He owns this paper. Colonel, he doesn't own me. He pays you. The paper pays me. And he couldn't afford, he couldn't afford to pay me what I get if I didn't contribute to its profits. And contribute pretty substantially at that. Uh, he can afford a cut in his profits. Can you afford an end to your income? Now, that's the sort of blunt statement I've been trying to get out of you ever since you arrived. And then give me your answer. Well, I'm not desperate. I could afford not to work for a few months. I could get another job, I've no doubt about that. It would be, well, shall we say inconvenient? And unnecessary. Then all I have to do is... Play down James's return. Don't make a fuss. Report it. It's been reported already. Then leave it. And well, that's your advice? Yes, it is. Well, thank you, Colonel. It's very good of you to come here today to give me your advice. Not at all, not at all. I did apologise earlier, but tonight's our press night and very soon the ancient presses must start their roaring. Uh, oh, yes, of course, of course. Then um, you'll be playing it down? No, Colonel. But you just said... I just said, thank you for your advice. If you like, I'll even apologise for not accepting it. I think you're being very rash. And I clearly don't think so. I'm not rash by nature. I'm very careful, which is what I'm being now. I don't think so. Look, I'm pressure-proof, Colonel. I get pressured all the time. I could show you the marks. I'm not rash. I didn't think Hadley was. He isn't. Well, I think it was rash and misguided of him to try and pressure an editor, any editor. He put you up to it, didn't he? Uh, nothing to say on that score. But you can't deny it, Colonel, because you're an honourable man. I think it was less honourable of our esteemed proprietor to make his first approach to me not direct, but through an intermediary. I told him that he ought to talk to you himself. <laughs> Which makes it twice your advice has been rejected today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had my advances rejected as well. Hmm? Uh, oh, well, Susan rejects mine too. The younger generation. Walters, you'll watch out for James. Of course. I mean it. I know you're a determined man, but so's he. When an irresistible force meets an immovable object. Don't you be too sure. You're not immovable. Been trying to buy you from your slave master. And he said? What we all know, my dear. You're not for sale. Are you? Well, I'm always open to offers, as I expect you are. But not pressure. Hip, hip. Well, since Susan's unwilling, let's settle for getting the paper to bed. Coldly precise mind. A return, perhaps influenced by the uncertain future of the ministry. Mm hmm. Hints of a certain flamboyance which one prominent motor car salesman hopes will result in the purchase of a more opulent vehicle. Well, what's wrong with this one? Nothing. Well, it says there you're thinking of changing. I am. Changing the cars, the least of it. I told you they'd make a fuss. Yes, yes, I know. I thought you could stop them. I thought so too. Well, let me turn around now and take you to their office. No. Are you, they'll still be. No! You... I will not be further inconvenienced by them. Mr. Walters can put himself at my disposal. Yeah, it's not a bad issue. Page seven looks very clumsy still. Oh, it's that damn travel agent. It blocks us so heavy that nothing stands out against him. Yeah, and he always is, insists on that page. And heaven knows why. Oh, our woman's page is still wet. Yeah, but it's cheap. It's not unpopular. You can't afford any more time on it. Not more than I spend already. 
Honestly, if you could see the copy when it arrives. And she manages to syndicate the stuff. We always have this moment. Just as we always have yours about Professor Stearns and his music pieces. Well, not only lousy, but a con job. One of these days, I'll do a real analysis of whose pupils don't get mentioned in his crummy notices. Well, do it in your own time. Guarantee me its accuracy. And you'll publish it. Or fire him. It's all right. I'm feeling pure this morning. Westdale Gazette? Who wants him? Oh, Mr. Maxwell. Mr. Hadley wants to speak to Mr. Walters? Then put him on, please. Secretary will want up, Mr. Oh, good morning, Mr. Hadley. <laughs> no, the Gazette doesn't run to a secretary to the editor. I'm just one of the reporting staff. One moment, please. Good morning. I said we should have waited till next week. And I thought you had some guts. Well, we'll see how much guts Wonder Boy's got. You're such a loyal staff as well. Oh, I didn't mean it like this. <coughs> you all organised for today? Well, I'm going to the St. Michael's seat because our hallowed MP is making an allegedly important statement. What, again? Well, there's always a hope that he's packing it in. And you? I've got the dog show at Marl's Village Hall. The judge is quite somebody and there could be a nice little piece about the winner in the mongrel class. And you? I've been summoned to the presence. Keep your fingers crossed. Probably. We've found out he's a pretty fair bastard. Well, if Walters goes, then I'll go. Now, what do you want to do a thing like that for? Well, gesture of solidarity. Yeah, well, don't expect me to make any gestures. What, you'd stay? Of course. Wrapped. Look, you live at home with Mummy. I've got a wife, two kids and a mortgage. I can't afford to make a futile, quixotic gesture. Then as I can, I'll make it. No, you can't afford to either. You're still a trainee. You're not even a full member of the union yet. And you won't get another reporting job in a hurry. Oh, that doesn't worry me. Haven't I taught you anything? Sure. Not even a bit of common sense. Do you really think that if Hadley was prepared to dispose of his editor, and a good editor at that... Agreed. ...that he's going to care tuppence about losing a junior girl reporter? No, I suppose not. Then, you daft thing, why should you? Why, it's the principle. I don't like bullies, and I wouldn't work for one. Would it work for me? Oh, you're different. You're not a very efficient bully. Like, you're not being very good at it now. Ah, well, if you go, we'll probably get some idiot schoolgirl, all spots and enthusiasm. That's not the sort of girl I want to teach anything to. Are you pleading with me now, Mr Spence? Well, sort of. Perhaps Hadley just wants to be sociable. Mm. An inch to the right with that pedestal, Maxwell. No, that's no good. Wait a minute. You know, I can go and get someone from the farm. Oh, there's no need. Oh, I'm sorry, Maxwell. I should never have involved you in this removal job. I can't see why with all these rooms... It's called consolidation, Maxwell. If I can work here, I will not work in that hideous cubbyhole that used to be the office. I can eat in here. It's nearer the kitchen. I can hold meetings here. Do you mean politics? Well, so? not yet. Now... Have you ever seen expert furniture removers at work? I have not, sir. Well, I have, so here's what we do. I get in here and you shift the pedestal. Oh, <coughs> and you take the ton on my sir. back. Now, Max will be as quick as you can. Don't test me, will you, because I'm not actually in training. Right, sir. Ready? Get right. Right. Here, let me. All right, so I can manage. Yes, wait a minute. I think that's it. Yes, well done. I'd forgotten that reporters always barge in. The door was open. And the bell does work. I've checked. Uh, my coat, please, Maxwell. Yes, sir. Will you be wanting any else? Nothing sir? at the moment, thank you. Right, sir. This is not precisely a social occasion. Please, sir, do sit down if you'd like to. Have a stand if you can sit. Now, that is an attitude. 
And please don't bother to tell me it's alleged to be a royal one or one adopted by a public figure. I don't propose to be a public figure. Can you prevent it? Well, I can prevent your making me one. How? Oh. By requesting your resignation. No? Mm, that's why I asked you here. You'll be lucky. I take it that means no. You're absolutely right. Well, then I've no alternative, have I? How do I know? I shall have now to... watch it. I thought, or at least I've been led to believe, that civil servants were bred into cautiousness. That's untrue. But? I thought that you, not personally, but as a breed, took advice. Are you offering some? Free, gratis, for nothing. Advice about my property? I'm not your property. Well, certainly not for any longer than I can help. Which may be longer than you think. Well, since you seem unwilling to resign, I shall have to dismiss you. Reluctantly, of course. You can't afford it. Well, I'm fairly certain that I can't afford you. And I'm absolutely positive you can't afford to get rid of me. I'm not making judgments only in a monetary sense. Meaning? Meaning you haven't read my contract. Now, I assure you that Mr. I Mr. Never... Hadley, you're groping. Hear me out. You don't know. But because this is a situation which affects me, my wife, my children, I've made it my business to know. Not to publish, note that. I could have published, I chose not to. Not to publish what? <laughs> well, you either know or you don't know. I know about my contract. Would you like to see it? Mm -hmm. It's a photostat. You'll note the originals of my bank. Well, of course, this is ridiculous. Your father wrote it. It's no more than a letter of intent. Signed by both parties, by me and by your father. Seven years, it guarantees you the title to the post and three years' salary should... Well, it's absurd. Well, you could contest it, but I promise you'd have to do it publicly and expensive. I could do that. You either. can't afford to buy me out of it. Not really afford. You can live here. You can even sacrifice the princely 4,327 pounds I know you were earning. That's an accurate figure? The accurate figure. And there was nothing inaccurate in the piece we published. There was, actually. You made it seem as though it took me four years to get my degree, it didn't. I spent one year at the Sorbonne. Without even getting a diploma. I knew that too and chose not to publish. Your choice is the greater one. Not really, because at this minute I choose a drink and you're not going to offer me one. Try me. I have to ask. I shall offer you one, Walters. A truce? Until I find my feet, yes. With a strong back already, I notice. Then take some advice, even from me. Find your bearings in the provinces, not as you remember them, but as they are now. You could do worse. And I'll just keep the paper going. Without involving me? I give that as an undertaking. Yes. Unless and until you decide to be involved. I shan't. You will. I even look forward to it. Who doesn't like a fight? and until you decide to be involved. I shall. You will. I even look forward to it. Who doesn't like a fight? Sorry, I'm not with you. Well, didn't Susan, whatever her name is, go to the police station this morning? Yes. And didn't she then go to Wilcox House to find out where it had been? Yes. Well, where's the story? What story? What story? I thought you said this girl was good. Well, she is. 
Well, why didn't she tell you that Wilcox was charged this morning with being drunk and incapable, pleaded guilty and was fined a pound, and why, since the police must know who he is, was he charged under an assumed name? Let's ask her. So, now, please, where did you get this? Colonel Chamberlain. Yes? So How did Wilcox what... explain his absence this morning? Well, he didn't. Well, didn't you ask him where he'd been? No. Why not? I thought it better not to. You mean to say that you sense a story and the fact this man is missing from home? You think it's important enough to take a taxi to get there, and when you do get there, you don't even ask him where he's been? He wasn't expecting me. He came back obviously distressed and in no mood to answer questions. So you didn't ask them? Well, that's very considerate of you, Miss Jackson, but it's not my idea of efficient reporting. Look, I don't expect my reporters to behave like inquisitors. If Sue judged at the wrong moment to ask a question, I'm sure her judgment was right. All right, then perhaps you tell me how we handle this story. About Wilcox being fined a quid for being drunk and incapable. No, that is not the story. The story is who allowed him to plead guilty under an assumed name. Geoffrey Wilson, occupation clerk, and why? Were the police doing him a favour? What for? For money? Well, my guess is that some young oh. copper who didn't know him pulled him in, and then when they got him to the station recognised him, they decided to go easy on him. He's well liked in town. I don't want guesses, I want facts. Well, I don't. What do you mean? I don't want to know about this story. Why not? If I ran it, I'd be destroying a valuable source of information. The police, I can't afford it. Yeah. What about Wilcox? How can you sit there cold-bloodedly asking us to wreck the reputation of a decent man for the sake of one Richard Collins? No, I suggest a compromise. Shall we get the facts first and then decide how we handle them? Then I decide how I handle them, you mean? All right. It's your story, Sue. I don't want it. I think it's still. You need a man on this job, a tough one. Spence. Look, I edit this paper. I hand out the jobs. I'm sorry. Bill's far too tactless to handle this. I'll do it. Good. Go to the clerk of the court first, find out the details of the charge. Okay. She's right, of course. She'll handle it much better than Spence. You manoeuvre women pretty well for a bachelor. Not only women, 